Everybody, please welcome and join me in welcoming Warrior Boswell. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all this morning? Good. Oh, yeah, great. All right. So, like, I, I don't know where to start. So, just, 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 just navigate me along. Where do you all want me to start? Okay. So, uh, we have some um, questions already formulated for you, sir. So, we're going to just let you basically do your own thing, and then at the end, we're going to do a Q and A with you if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. Perfect. I figured I, I was working at a production company and the production company, uh, we had a deal with Disney and that uh, we, we reached the, the end of our deal and we all got severance packages. So like it was me designing is something that I'd always like thought about, but I just never thought I had the resources nor like the active community around me to, to make it happen. But getting that severance package, like, you know, you all know what service packages are like, you know, it's, it's an allotment of money. And I was fortunate enough that I, I was staying with my father at the time. And he said, you know, as long as you're pursuing what you want to pursue, you know, you got my, you have my un, un, unyielding support. So it was the perfect time for me to like make that step and say, it's time to believe in myself and figure something out. Plus I had no, like there, there was no job in the pipeline. It was like, you know, whatever you want to do, like this is the perfect time to make that that uh, that dream a reality. Specifically, right now, anything is possible. Like anything, it's just a matter of you know how um, how steadfast will you be on um, making sure that it happens. Like there have been people who have accomplished a tremendous amount with far less than you can ever imagine with just having like a great network or having, you know, just really, really good friends that are connected to other people that, you know, once they figure out, you know, what their network is, what they want to do, once they connect all those dots, like it can look like they have like a budget like Ralph Lauren has or like, you know, Virgil has. Like it's, it's, it's just a matter of like figuring out what you want to do one figuring out who the people are that you want to get it to, two, and three, just the execution of it. So like, it's definitely realistic, but your mind is like, your mind is pivotal and is so powerful in this entire process because your mind can talk you out of something or it can talk you all the way into something. So it just depends what side of your mind are you on, the progressive side or the dormant side. So let me rewind a little bit. So from, from, from the 10th grade to the 11th grade, I grew from 5'8 to 6'3 and a half. And I didn't stop growing until I was 29. And I'm 6'7 and a half now. So I had a very difficult time just finding just the most basic things like, you know, t-shirts and long sleeve shirts and pants. So when I decided that I was going to start designing, my initial thing was I need to design some stuff that like, I would want to live in stuff that I would want to wear all the time. So I initially like designed a sweater, a shirt and a pair of pants. And then from there, like, you know, I met a gentleman who had his own company where he was selling to a very high end clientele. And he was like, I can't believe that you were able to, to accomplish and do all of this stuff with such meager resources financially and also socially. And I have all of the resources. This is what the person was telling me. He was like, you need to come work with me. And then when I worked with him, I designed my first suit with him for myself. Yeah, I mean, it was the barrier to entry when I started 15 years ago was much, was much higher than it is now. Like, you know, anybody can go online now and, you know, find some manufacturer and you know strike up a you know relationship with that manufacturer and as long as you have the clientele you're now uh, you know you're, you're now in that business but back when i started it was like you had to like it was almost like being knighted by like masons like you had to like know this person and go to this alley and knock on the door three times and you know it, it, was, all, it was all kind of craziness going on back then but in answer to your question the barrier to 
entry was higher then, but it's lower now. Uh, my first famous client was a gentleman by the name of Tyson Chandler, and he played for the Chicago Bulls. And, um, you know, it was, uh, he, he was playing for the New Orleans Hornets, and Chris Paul was one of his teammates, and Dave West was another one of his teammates. I believe his name is Dave West. Anyway, uh, he, was, <laughs> he was saying that, um, you know, like, I have a very unique style. He was talking about himself. His style is very unique, and a lot of the places that he was going to, they just didn't understand his, just his ethos in terms of dress. So when he met me and saw how tall I was and, you know, saw how, how I had, had styled my, myself, he was like, you can definitely understand what I'm doing. And basically from him, you know, it, it was in terms of like getting more NBA clientele, it was, it was very easy for me to do that with him because he was already one of the guys who was like looked at as one of the more stylish guys in the league at that time. Well, the thing is, like, I would say, you know, every client, like, if you have children or if you don't, when you do have children, like, I have two, I don't have a favorite. I love both of them the same. And I, I, I give you that example because, like, I like all of my clients the same for different reasons. Like, some clients are extremely difficult for, you know, reasons that they only understand. And then you have other clients who are, like, you know, very adventurous and then you have clients that are conservative so i give you those three examples to say like they're all good but just in different ways on different levels i have you know i've, I've, I've done you know publicists and uh you know the more traditional route um the, the thing that works more than anything is like literally dealing directly with your clientele so, you know, anybody who wants to, you know, be in fashion or do something that's creative, it's important to just realize what your lane is. And, you know, usually if, 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 it's, if it's a lane that's less traveled, know it's going to be, you know, a bit more difficult to get to the sunlight. But if, it's, but if it's a lane that you literally bulldoze and you flatten the land and you lay the, you know, the, uh, the concrete, like once it dries up, like that land you're standing on is yours. So it's, it's like you can follow everyone else, but if it's 15 people trying to do one style, I think it'd be like your, your odds are better if you're like focused on your own thing. And specifically if it's good, like once you make it to the, you know, once you, once you make it to the end of the tunnel, if it's good, you got your own lane and nobody is, nobody is like within a mile close of you. So you, so you're able to just clean up. Uh, what I plan on doing is uh, keeping the custom portion of the business because that is, um, I mean, like there's nothing better than dealing directly with the client. The only problem with dealing with um, uh, just doing primarily custom is that there are, there are so many workable hours in a day. And if you have children or if you have family, you know, once they come, like they naturally take up a lot more time. So in answer to your question, the, um, the future goals are to have ready to wear platforms because ready to wear platforms if they are done properly and distributed correctly, like you earn money when you're awake, when you're at lunch, when you sleep, when you're with your children, with your wife, that's the goal is, you know, to create a ready to wear platform to join alongside the custom platform. For the most part, the thing that's beautiful about, you know, um, social media is that, you know, if, if, if it's something that's true, like, I, I have no problem owning it, but like, you know, someone who is like, you know, question mark, question mark, at sign, at sign 72, like whatever they're talking about, like I, I don't really concern myself. And yeah. you know, if, like I, I, for the most part, people who are on my social media, they're pretty much respectful. And if it's ever something that's like, you know, I mean, just like thoroughly vulgar or just like 
completely crass for no reason. Like, I don't have a problem engaging that person. And like I said, if it's true, you know, like I'll own up to it. But if it's something that's just like negative for no reason, it's just like, you know, you just put that to bed and you just block that person from social media and just go on with your life. I, I don't really feel that it's a controversy at the root of it. Yeah. And the thing that's so interesting about the thing that, I mean, like it being called a controversy is that like people really, really forget that the person who told Colin to kneel was a decorated military. I mean, like it, it was somebody from the military and like his goal was, you know what? I'm going to kneel and this is my belief. And for the most part, a lot of NFL players didn't even, they, they, they didn't used to come out for the national anthem at all. And it, 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 it just became a bigger situation. But mainly the thing that's so important is that there aren't young white children being shot in the back throughout America. It's just, you know, African-Americans primarily, and I'm sure that there are some, you know, other ethnic, some other ethnic groups as well, but by and large, it's African-Americans. So it's not really, a controversy to me, I like, I mean, like, I'm I, I, like, I would be proud to stand with somebody who would like literally risk everything, everything, just so people can understand his narrative. Like, that's, that's incredible. So I, I, I don't have a problem working with Nike at all. No, I mean, like, it's, it's, <laughs> I would draw this comparison, like people who are gonna do business with me, we're gonna do business. It's like, I don't smoke weed at all. But like, California legalizing weed, like it doesn't affect me. Like people who are gonna smoke weed are gonna smoke weed. Like people who are gonna come and support me are gonna come support me. Like, and if something like that can dissuade somebody, I'm cool, I don't need your money. So generally, when I'm when I'm introduced to any client of of, of in, in any uh, you know professional field, the first thing I want to know is you know what they like, what colors they like, who they admire in popular culture. Um, have they ever had anything custom done? If they have, what did they think about the experience? Those things are important to me because in my office I have about you know seventy five different fabric books. And the thing is, when you're looking at something, people inherently are just very visual. So when they have something and they see a bunch of it, you can get visually overwhelmed. So it's very important for me, prior to somebody even coming in, is to know all of the aforementioned. And then based off of what they tell me, I then prepare like, you know, a color story for them. So when they come in, I can navigate them and know, like I, I, like I can show them, like based off of our conversation, you are more conservative. So I'm not gonna show you Pounce tubes and Glen plaids and polka dots. I'm going to show you, you know, your basic color palette, something that's more primary in color, and it just makes it very easy to flow. And by and large, most of the guys are just very relaxed when they come in because, like, I've done the research and asked the proper questions. Um, for the most part, yeah, because there's no like, I I grew off the traditional scale at maybe like 18. So like I hadn't been able to buy, you know, shirts or a pair of pants from like, you know, a regular store in since 1996. <laughs> so yeah, I, I pretty much wear my own stuff. I mean, you know what, you, you know, it's interesting. Like sometimes like, like I do a lot of thrift shopping so like sometimes I like come across like, you know, like an old starter jacket that like fits perfectly or an old Levi's uh, denim jacket that fits perfect or a pair of like polo pants. Like, like I find stuff very sparsely, but by and large, I'm generally wearing my own, my own design. Uh, just attention to detail and um, just, my my sister always says that um, like I've never met a stranger. Like I'm very I'm like like I'm in, in terms of talking to people, just the connectivity is is very easy for me to like reach somebody where they are. 
and when you're dealing with making you know something custom like it's a very intimate set of measurements so you know just me talking to someone making them feel at ease is like is 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 really a uh, a skill set that i didn't realize i had at until i entered this business so like just the value proposition is or my business value proposition is really making stuff that clients are going to feel good about that they would love to wear over and over and over again and also my connectivity with them on a personal and professional level that that brand being self-sufficient and um you know me being able to raise a family and continually grow my business from my business and grow my family as well. That's been my greatest achievement. Um, my, my biggest failure is early on, you know, like there are, there, there are certain individuals that have like playbooks. And like, you know, I, I have friends of all different races, but like, you know, like a lot of my associates who have you know family that are in the business like they give them a playbook of like you know who to contact before you start your business so everything is in place and I didn't necessarily have that like when I first started you know like I literally started because I was having a problem finding clothes so when I got my first check for a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars I was like this is all mine and it wasn't you gotta make sure that you take money out for taxes that you're paying your vendors like all of those little things were like, you know, things that I had to learn. So I would say like the, 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 the only negative is like when I started, I didn't know, I, I, I truly didn't know what I was getting into. But like, you know, just, I guess that's, that's one of the benefits of starting your own business is that like, you know, if you, if you know, if like if there's a saying, if I knew now, or if I knew back then, what I knew, knew now, I knew back then. <laughs> yeah. Like, I probably wouldn't have because it is, it is a lot of work. But the main thing is, you know, once it, become, once it became successful, like, it's mine. So, you know, whether it is virtue or vice, like, as long as I stay obedient to what I want the brand to be, it'll become that. Some of it is. Some, some, some of it is on, on the custom. Well... I mean, like, I think everything as it applies to apparel pretty much is, is handmade, but like the suiting is literally like, there's no mechanized anything. It's all done by hand. But like, if you're thinking of something that's ready to wear, like, you know, like these sweatsuits that I'm going to come out with, or, you know, a pair of socks or shoes, like you have, you know, craftsmen that are guiding machines to make it, but by and large, it's all made by hand. This is generally my, my, my uniform. I have the giraffe's neck, it's very long. So I'm always wearing like, you know, my shirt is buttoned up. Um, I have some very, very colorful pants on. Nice, that's fun. I got some Nikes on. So I'm like, you know, like the whole look. That's it, that's it. Like I'm generally wearing like the same thing like day in and day out, I call it a, um, an Einstein wardrobe. Like he had like a closet full of like all gray suits, all white shirts, all black shoes. And he did that because he was like, I got too many other things on my mind. So I need to just be able to go to my, my closet and pick something out and it'd be easy. You know what, I'm just, I mean, just very simply put, like, you know, your dreams are like what, is, is like a manifestation of things that you can do. So once your eyes open, like the, your, your actions and the things that you do every day are either gonna support the dream that you just had or it's gonna deter it. I was talking earlier about, you know, your mind is a very powerful thing and, and it can talk you into something or talk you out of something. So the main thing I would be focused on, you know, as just, just as a young professional is if I think of it, I wouldn't discount it. I would figure out how I can do it. And the main thing I wouldn't do is I would be very mindful and very careful on who you're sharing your aspirations with. Because based upon that person's experience, they can talk you into something or out of something. 
And just because it didn't work out for them, that doesn't mean it won't work for you. It may have been something that they didn't do that caused them to fail or not reach the, you know, reach the, the paramount. But you just have to be very careful on who you're sharing any idea with, any dream with. You just, should, I mean, like, you should just really, really be focused on, you know what, if I dreamt it or if I thought about it, let me put everybody in place or let me find the people who can help make my dream a reality. That would be my greatest, uh, greatest input to you young professionals. From overproducing, I know exactly how much I need to have on hand, which is zero. Okay. <laughs> uh, by and large, for, for, for the most part, um, whenever I'm making something in terms of ready to wear, um, it's, it, it, that equation is such a gamble because you don't know what people are going to like versus not like. And the thing about just the business landscape now is that you, know, you have the ability to talk directly to consumers directly to people who are supporting you, to the people who are giving you stats, meaning the people who are looking at your Instagram, liking what you do. So, you know, you can literally have a conversation with them, whether you have, if you have 1,500 people, 15,000, 150,000, or 1.5 million, you can talk to them and ask them, out of all these things that I've created, which ones would you like to see? And they'll tell you. And that's a very valuable tool that a lot of, you know, forefathers of business did not have. One, I would, I mean, just having a plan prior to us talking and, you know, literally just picking up the phone and just, you know, once you get a hold of somebody, I'm, I'm going to take myself out of it just, just for a second. Like when I was attempting to like get in stores or if I wanted to be covered by a specific magazine or like I just wanted to meet somebody, you know, prior to me, like, uh, like say I wanted to meet Will Smith, prior to going to a premiere after party where I know he would be, I would have in my mind the agenda that I wanted once I met him. So once I met him, it was no stuttering. It was no staggering over words. It was like it was very clear and concise. And I would say now to bring it full circle, if you're wanting somebody, if you're wanting to do business with me, if you have just like in your mind, like, Boz, this is where I see you excel at, but this is where I see you need help at. And I can help you, and this is how much it's gonna cost, and this is how long it's gonna take. That is like, that, that, that's what creatives want to know. Like, I want to know, like, I am getting very good at delegation because it's only so much, me like, mind space I have. So, like, if you come in and you're answering all those key questions, that makes it very good for you. It took some time. Like, I've been, like, in business for 15 years. So I would say the lion's share of that time, like, it was literally just me. So, you know, I had no problem, you know, measuring the clients, taking the money, and also, you know, mopping and also sweeping up my office. Like, you have to, you have to be that person, you know, for a point in your career. But, like, at, at, like at a certain time, you find yourself getting tired. You find yourself getting burnt out. So you just want to make sure that, you know, you surround yourself with, with the right people because everybody, each and every one of you all has a specific skill set that the other person sitting directly next to you does not have. So if you know specifically, like, I am great at this area, I know exactly where I'm good at, and I know where I falter at. So the places where I falter at, it's my goal to find people who are great in those areas. So when I delegate, they can pair it back to me how they accomplish what I was deficient at. Uh, well, one has been extremely successful because, you know, they're one of the biggest in the world. And I mean, just like the sheer number of people that they, that, that work for them is like, is staggering, like 820,000 people in America alone. And I know I not only dress, you know, the American staff, but I also do it for Canada as well. 
So it's a, it, it's a great feather in my cap because when I go to meet other people or go and uh, pitch myself to other corporations, you know, once they ask, well, who else have you done stuff for? Once you say McDonald's, it's like, okay, well, let's just open the door. So it's, it's, it's been extremely successful. And, um, you know, like at, at this point, like there are, uh, there are a few other companies that have come to me and I'm, I'm just constantly amazed that based upon how big some of these companies are, how disjointed a lot of them is, are in terms of communicating with each other on the executive board. That's been, that's been the, the, the most eye-opening part of this equation. Um, just, 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 just being aware of my surrounding um, and, and just also being aware of what's going on in popular culture. And once you see something that you like in popular culture, like understanding is that applicable to you? Like I could, like there, there was a point in time when I was, when I was really young, like I have like a very close knit set of friends. And like, I thought like, you know, like I thought sandals were like, I was like, yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to get on the sandal kick. And my buddies were like, no, bro, no. <laughs> That's not the move right there. So even though they were, even though they were great in popular culture, like it didn't work for me and how people viewed me. So, you know, there's, you know, this movement going on right now, what they call ugly clothes. Like I can see like how it's, how it's beautiful to some people, but it's just something that like, it doesn't, it doesn't strike a chord with me. But what I can do is I can look at what's popular in popular culture and I can take traits of that and just apply it to my overall ethos and just create. So in answer to your question, I see things like, I mean, like Instagram is great. You know, like I'm constantly like reading a lot of just, just, just anything I get my hand on, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it just to just brush up on my skills. But also um, there's a place called the Rose Bowl in Pasadena and it's a flea market every second Sunday. And just going out there and just seeing what people have is just amazing because you can draw so much inspiration from just from, from, from just seeing how people are dressed and also what people are selling. And that's it. Uh, that's a great question. It, like initially when I started 15 years ago, there was no Instagram, there was no Facebook, there was no like MySpace. And I know MySpace is like a dinosaur now. Um, so it was all based upon relationships. So, I mean, it was pretty much once I figured out, once I left the industry and got the severance package and was like, what am I going to do? Once I figured out that I was going to be making stuff for myself, it was then important for me to put myself in situations where people that I was looking to reach were. So it was, uh, it, there, there were a lot of premieres that I was going to. Uh, there was a lot of networking with my former uh, co-workers at, the, at William Morris and United Talent. And just from that, you know, it, it's just like the business grew from that because it was just me being just my genuine self telling, you know, my former co-workers, this is what I'm doing now. So anybody who was even thinking about anything formal or casual in terms of custom, I, I was getting those calls. So... In answer to your question, it was face to face initially, but now like I'm at a point where I'm like, I'm 15 years in and I have a great dossier of clients that I've dressed. So like people can go online and they can see, oh, you dress LeBron for the Canelo fight or you dress, you know, this executive for his wedding. So it's, it, now it's more social. But back when I initially started, it was face to face. Yes, yes. Yeah. The times that I've forgotten it, I've paid heavily for it. So like, is like, like I attempt every day to like, like, I'm reading this book by this gentleman by the name of Devon Franklin called The Hollywood Commandments. And he talks about when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you do should be your connection with whoever you follow religiously. Your first thing shouldn't be to wake up and pick up your phone. And that was like what I was doing for a while. Like I would just wake up and as soon as like my feet hit the floor, like I was reaching for my phone. But now like when I wake up, I sit at the edge of the bed and just thank God for another day. Thank God for great health. 
good employees, good clients, and just being able to go someplace that I enjoy going to every day. So I definitely believe in the law of attraction. I would say, you know, if, if, if funds are limited, I would definitely focus on, like, if you, if, you, if you have a series of ideas, like, I would narrow it down to the strongest one. Once I narrow it down to the strongest one, I would just make sure to, de to develop my, my product and make sure that, like, the packaging is phenomenal. Make sure that what you say your product does, it actually does. And then I would create a wish list of people that I want to get it to who can provide the maximum amount of wattage on what I'm looking to do. But before you like go out and start to give that to people, you need to make sure that if it's something you're selling, that like you set up like, you know, your social media handle, make sure you set up a website. And like a lot of this is stuff that you can do yourself. But like once you set all of the stuff up and all of like the back end work is done, then you go out and you like, you know, start to, and you'd be surprised if you're talking about the law of attraction, if you are like literally attracting the persons that you want to use your product, miraculous things will happen to where you find yourself like right in front of all of the persons that you want to be in front of. But it doesn't benefit you if you put the cart before the horse. And when I say the cart before the horse, that means if you just create a product and then you just say, okay, I want to meet this person because you'll end up meeting that person like as soon as you leave your class today. And if you don't have your website set up, you can get it to that person. That person can talk to everybody in the world about it and how great it is. But if you don't have a website to support it or means or how to reproduce it, that is the worst. And I'm telling you from experience, like there were times when I had, you know, I was like, I want to dress this person. I want to get this on this client. And I had gotten it on that client. And that person went and spoke from the highest hilltop. Like this is warrior Bible. Oh, this is great. And I had no way of duplicating it. So like, it was like I was getting all this press for not. The first button up and the first pair of pants that actually fit me the way I wanted them to. Cause I'm like, I'm six, seven and a half. So like I said, I grew out of the normal grading scale at 18. So like, I didn't stop growing until I was 29. So that's 11 years when I didn't have anything that fit me properly. So you, I mean, like, I'm not there, but you, like, you look like you're pretty basic size. And I want you to understand how blessed all of you all are who are basic size to be able to walk into a store and be able to, like, grab something off a rack, put it on, and it fits you perfectly. That is amazing. That's something I, I don't know. So, like, as little as that is, like, it's amazing. And, like, I, th I think just by and large, a lot of us take things for granted. Like I would always ask my mom, like when I was younger, why do I have five fingers? And she said, well, when you injure one of them, you'll understand why you need all five. Like I, for the longest, was a regular size kid and I was buying stuff off the rack. But when I had that growth spurt, it threw everything out of whack. And, for, and, and to not have stuff that fit for 11 years, that wasn't the business, bro. I was hurting. I was hurting. So that's it. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with just, you know, just a basic conversation um, that I'm having with a client. Like, you know, if somebody's coming to me and they've never done custom before, for me to ask, you know, that client, okay, who do you, who do you admire in popular culture or what type of stuff are you looking for? Even the person who says, I don't have any fashion sense, has a fashion sense because we all have looked at movies, we all have seen books, we've all watched TV. So we all have a point of reference on whose style we like. So for me to sit down with somebody and ask them that, and for them to give me the answers, and then for me to show them visually what I think they look good in, it, like, it, it, it really fast forwards the whole... Um, the whole should I trust versus should I not trust this person? My father would always say, like, there are two things you learn from people. You learn what to do and what not to do. So, you know, this past uh, fashion week, I went to Paris and um, 
it was Virgil Abloh's first show for Louis Vuitton. And just the, it was just not only his show, but there were several other shows that were happening in Paris. And I was just like, it, it, it's good. Based, based on whatever profession you want to enter or whatever discipline you want to like be in to make your money, it's always good to like go to the epicenter of where that's happening. And when you go there, you'll understand like you can compete as long as you do A, B, and C. But like, if you're like, you know, if, if you're wanting to be in clothing and like you refuse to, to leave North Carolina, it, it's like you need to go to New York or you need to go to Paris or you need to go wherever your industry is happening. Like if I, would, if I wanted to make cars and it was like the 40s, I would be like, I need to be in Detroit because you want to see and you want to be around that energy. So I guess to answer your question, the thing that attracts me and the thing that I see are literally based off of me seeing it firsthand. Because there's, there's nothing better than you seeing it versus, you know, you, you don't ever want people to pair it back to you. Like, this is what I saw today. And this was like, if you're there and you see it, it it's, it's incredible and it can motivate you. Thank you all so much.